couple of announcements. Journey of a Lifetime continues tonight at 6, and on Wednesday at 9, praise team will be Thursday at 7, not 6.30, but 7. Uh, Deborah and I will be getting back into the house a little later on that day, so 7 o'clock. Uh, Friday and Saturday, the Presbytery meets, and uh, we have our two representatives from here. So Saturday will be a work day. We're going to finish the sidewalk that has begun over at the manse, uh, over towards the building, over towards the garage, and uh, probably replacing some boards and taking out some posts and all kinds of stuff. So. We could use, as my dad would always say, when he needed somebody, he says, I need somebody with a weak mind and a strong back. So that's what we'll need. We don't need any, any uh, bosses. We just need workers. And I won't be here to boss, so we'll all get along fine. Trustees on the 16th, 17th, our session. And uh, I don't know, not too many of you attend the fire hall breakfast, but I encourage you to do that. Uh, excellent breakfast. The eggs are superb. Must be the chef. Uh, and, and you just have to have the eggs. That's the celery too. Um, but it's also a great way to support our fire department, who does an amazing job. So uh, come on out anywhere from six o'clock in the morning until ten. But the eggs are superb. I, I just want to make sure that you understood that. So probably that Saturday I'll work. Okay, um, Operation Christmas Shop still needs washcloths, soap, toothbrushes, and, and articles of small articles of clothing. So uh, if you are interested, see April. Okay, she'll take all the all funds that she went through. To uh, purchase that stuff. I say you don't have to purchase it. Yes, and I have an updated list um, from Ruth. As of last night, they still need 946 soaps and washcloths, 772 toothbrushes, 1,639 stuffed animals, small and medium size, and 912 articles of clothing. Uh, and I found that in some items, um, I can get them cheaper off of Amazon than you get them at the warehouse. So if you want to donate any money for me to purchase items or Jean, please see us. Thank you. Okay. Very good. So uh, you've got a few pennies to spare or a few thousand pennies to spare. She'll take it. I'm going to the warehouse next week. Okay. All right. You two get together and talk about what she can get cheaper. Well, I'm just going to say if they wanted specifically just to get the toy type of items, I can get those in the warehouse and at least the price. Anything else, people can get food. When you buy, buy the gross or something, but when I'm buying this, piece by piece. Yeah. Okay. So we've got two resources going down, so doing something. Very good. Are there any other announcements? <coughs> then greet one another with the love of the Lord.
that your word lights our way. And Father, that word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. Oh, Father, give us a heart after your word. Today, Father, renew our minds that we might love you with everything we have. And so, Father, we just give you the thanks and the praise as we gather in this place in Jesus' name and know that your Spirit is here with us. And so lead us. Have your way, Holy Spirit. And we give you the thanks and the praise in Jesus' name. God's people say. Amen. Amen. Who has some praise to share this morning? So yesterday was really nice. Yesterday went fine. We needed more community, but we who were there had a fun time. Anybody else? I was blessed to win one time, and, and I received a delightful little booker, David Jeremiah, that from one of the sisters. Okay. As a gift. Uh huh. <coughs> Who else? Yes. This is Pastor Appreciation Sunday, and I just thank God for bringing you and Debbie to our valley and our churches. Thank you. We love you and me. appreciate you and feel so blessed by you. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Don't clap, you so many. Yeah, praise the Lord. I appreciate that. Uh, Deborah obviously and I are very happy to be here. Deborah was kind of burned out after yesterday. She's got her feet up. So, uh, and she talked. Okay. And she talked all that week. Yes, yes. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's the bottom part of the body that gives me trouble, not the top. The top part gives me trouble. <laughs> Keeps you in line. <laughs> it takes more than that. Uh, <laughs> Anybody else? I just want to praise the Lord that um, even when we're going through struggle, even when there's things happening around us that we don't understand, um, He still makes His presence known. He still speaks to us. Um, okay. I've really been struggling in this past couple of weeks. The Lord has really been speaking to me, and um, I do not like to write. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon me, it just floods. And I have something I'd like to share with the congregation this okay. morning. I just feel it's important to remind us all of us. I call it downcast. Why are you downcast, my soul? Do you not trust in the goodness of God? When life does not go as I think it should, as disappointments and roadblocks seem to abound, and distractions of my life cloud my outlook, then my joy is hard to find. Where is my trust? Where is my perspective? I ask myself as I continue to live, I hope I'm not holding a grudge, oh my God, against you. If so, Lord, please forgive. Why are you downcast, my soul? Do you not trust in the goodness of God? Why should I place my hope in anything, God, other than you? When I'm disappointed, it shows me, Lord, that I'm not fully trusting. I know it's true. Please move my eyes, O oh Lord. Move my heart, I pray. Move me more into your presence each and every day. When I find myself abiding in you, it's when I'm restored by the power of your might. Breathe your life into me. Lift me up, as only in you I will truly take flight. As I begin to lift, distractions still abound and circumstances still try to pull me down. If I lose focus for very long, I'm sure that I will crash to the ground. Help me fix my eyes on you as you lift me up to higher ground. Let my faith abound with hope in you, for there I am secure. When I'm at the crossroads between hope and despair, may I always be aware that you are there. You are still God who is faithful and true. 
you are good, you are with me, I will always trust in you. Praise the Lord. I should have used that as a lead in for my sermon. Mm -hmm. That comes through the voice. Anybody else? That's what this time is for, to share what God is saying to you. <clears throat> Nothing else? Boy, what? Let's stand and sing joyful, joyful.
Father, that your Holy Spirit even now, while he is with us, would even now visit them. We know nothing, it, nothing binds him away from his presence. He can be there as well as here. And we just ask, Father, that your Holy Spirit would draw each one of them to the realization of just how much you not only love them and care for them, but how much you will do for them as they yield themselves more and more daily to you. Father, just pour out a, a special healing anointing on those who need heal, comforting to those who need comfort, counsel for those who are struggling with some of life's big problems in their lives. Father, in all things, and more than anything, be the Lord of their situation. We thank you that the devil is defeated. Jesus is Lord. Help them each to recognize and realize just how important and meaningful that is. Bless our military personnel. Pour out your presence upon them. No matter where they are, no matter what they're going through, be not only their guard, but be their guide. Strengthen them. Give them courage. Help those who don't know you, Father, to recognize their need for you today. And may they yield to Jesus. For this government, for this country. Father, we've gone through some real struggles this past week. Some real problems. People are going haywire. Father, it's all because we've asked you to leave our society. We have declared that other things are more important than you or your word. And Father, decisions like those certainly do have consequences. But Father, we know that as the church, we can come against the powers of darkness and declare that Jesus is Lord. Father, we just ask for the courage when we face situations and circumstances to declare that. Maybe to those who we work with or those who we may even live with, to let them know Jesus is still Lord as we trust Him. So Father, we give You thanks and praise. We give You the glory and the honor. And it's all because of Jesus who opened that gateway to heaven for us. And it's in His name that we join our hearts together and pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever.
Use them for your glory. Thank you for the privilege of giving into your kingdom. And may indeed your kingdom come. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Children.
they realized that was a prayer. Prayer for the Spirit of God to do His will on our will. Today, as we get into loving the Lord with all of our mind, you may follow along in the bulletin if you'd like. We talk about loving God with all of our mind, all of our understanding. It's crucial that we ask the Spirit of God to open up our minds that we might receive what God wants for us. I don't know how many of you re recognize or realize, but it is our minds that the devil works on first. He's always whispering things to us. Trying to get us to do what we know we shouldn't do. He knows our weaknesses, so he just keeps pounding those little weaknesses in our little minds. But the reality, there is a way to overcome all of those. I, I'm pretty sure I had shared with you before, but I think it's so fitting at this time to, to share it again about dealing with counterfeit money. When a person is being trained to recognize counterfeit money, the moment he sees it, he's never given counterfeit money. He's only given the real stuff. And they spend time and time and time focusing on the real stuff so that when the phony stuff comes, they recognize it right now. That's what God has for us. The more we get into His Word and get our minds trained to know what's the real stuff, when the devil comes through and gives us the phony baloney, we recognize it. Because we know the real from the false. Today we're going to look about that. Look about the Word because it is the Word that helps us really establish our minds. Romans 8, 6. I used this text last week, part of it, but this is so important. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. There is a pleasure in sin for a season. Sin has its pleasurable moments. But as Paul says, it's going to end in death. Sin has its pleasures, but eventually there is a cost. That is one of the reasons why sexually transmitted diseases are running rampant here. There is an enjoyment for a season, but there are consequences pay. And the reality is, is that as long as we're yielding to our flesh and what our flesh desires, we'll never find the victory. We'll never find hope. We'll never find peace. We'll just go from one thing to another, one person to another, trying to find it and it'll never come until our minds are finally yielded to the Spirit of God. I would venture to say that in the communities around us, 90% of the people have no peace. 90% of the people have no hope. 90% of the people have no possibility the only thing they're looking at is the grim reaper. That's one of the exciting things about us. We don't have to look at the grim reaper. We can look at the joy of heaven. 
But in order for us to have that, we've got to know what the Word of God is saying to us. We've got to have minds that are different from where they are today. Romans 12, Paul says, do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, His pleasing, and His perfect will. Don't conform to anything around us. Everything, all the world is trying to get the church to conform. And many churches have done just that. Many churches, denominations, have determined that abortion is okay. That sexual improper act, act, actions, whether it be homosexual or heterosexual, are acceptable. Many denominations have determined that Jesus was only a man. The church has been infiltrated with the lies of the enemy. And what's interesting is that it didn't start like he just all of a sudden threw a lie and we accepted it. I was listening to Pastor Norquist of Booty Bible Institute this morning. And he was saying how false teachers get in. And he says it's simple. They get in speaking the truth with a little lie. It reminds me of a fellow called Satan who when Jesus was in the wilderness came and spoke the truth with a little lie. And pretty soon, the truth gets smaller and the lie gets bigger. And as people start accepting Him for the truth that seems to get smaller and the lie that gets bigger, because He's still speaking the truth, the next thing you know, it's all a lie. And the church is entrapped by Satan's power. Well, that's the same way in our lives. And that's one of the reasons why we have to not be caught up with what the world is saying. Let me tell you something. Do not believe the polls, whether they're pro or whether they're not. My wife listened to a poll yesterday. And she told me that the poll said that Penn State was going to get beat. That Florida state was going to get beat. She went right down the list of all the people who are going to get beat that never got beat. <laughs> and I told her, I says, don't listen to that stuff. And it's the same thing with life. Never believe that the church is going downhill. I want you to understand that the church of Jesus is still going on. The church of Jesus is getting stronger than it's ever gotten. We may not have the numbers, but that doesn't mean that the church is any less strong. Satan has some people so mixed up that when the truth hits them, they have no idea what it is. Some people, let, listen carefully, some people get so caught up with with being involved in just listening. Even if it's listening to gospel music. But they miss the word. Let me be honest with you. Not all gospel music has is centered in the word. It's not. Some of it is centered in, in common ordinary stuff that Satan can take and move you away. Without the Word of God, the, without the Word changing and transforming our minds, no matter how much you say, no matter how much you listen, 
it doesn't change you. It's the Word of God that transforms us, that changes us. You all know I love that music. You all know I love music. But music is only supposed to be used to have us enter into worship. It's not worship itself. Music has never been worship. Worship is here. Worship is here. If it's only here, then it's in vain. Worship is here. And music just gets us into the mood of hearing proclamation of the Word. Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. Wing it from earth and through all its pulses. Move. Do not confirm, conform any longer to what the world say. Don't be caught up in all that garbage. Love the Lord your heart. Proverbs 23, the writer says, for as a man thinks, that's what he is. As a man thinks, that's what he is. You've got to grasp that. As a man thinks, that's what he is. If I think I'm afraid of everything, I'm afraid of everything. If I think I'm going to get sick, you're going to get sick. I've heard people say, oh, I'm going to be sick all week. You know what? Now we're going to get attacked. And the enemy's going to give us sicknesses. And he's going to do all kinds of things with us, trying to get us and persuade us away from God. But the reality is, it's what we think that makes the difference. If, if all of a sudden the devil whispers, you're going to be sick. And I say, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. Okay, I may get sick, but by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. I'm going to claim my healing. Not because I'm worthy of it, but because God's grace is sufficient. Hello? I trust in God's grace. I'm not trusting in what... I don't even trust what the doctors say. I know. Doctors can give you some terrible reports at times. But if we start thinking about those instead of thinking about the promises of God, we're going to get so caught up in that stuff that it's going to make us miserable. It's far greater to think on the promises of God. God's always going to be there. God's always faithful. No matter what I'm going through, Jesus is Lord. Amen. And when we begin to declare that Jesus is Lord, no matter what our situation all of a sudden, our mind begins to get stirred up. And all of a sudden, we begin to think the positive things instead of the negative. You can get bombarded with negatives in a hurry today. Bombarded with them. But it's the positives that make the difference, not the negatives. How many of you can't wait to get, to a, get with a negative person? Yeah. Nobody wants to be near a negative person. I mean, I, I, I've always found out that if someone is talking to you about someone else, and it's always negative, usually. If they're talking to you about someone else, they'll talk about you to someone else. Hello? Negatives are the destruction of God's plan for our lives. Negatives are all around us. Well, I mean, that was negative what happened in Las Vegas. That was negative. That man had no hope. That man had no future even though he was a millionaire. Just because he had money didn't guarantee him any satisfaction. And somehow in his warped mind, he thought killing people would give him some sense of satisfaction. Because bottom line is whatever we do, we want to be satisfied with whatever we do. Isn't that right? So somehow, he thought that was going to bring him satisfaction. To the extent that he had scheduled in Chicago and in Boston, he was planning to get out of there. He was planning to go and do the same thing in those cities. Because he had 
no future. As a man thinks, so he is. Philippians gives us an idea of what we're supposed to be thinking about. <laughs> Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. So whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and then the peace of God will be with you. Think on these things. If we want peace in this troubled world, think on these things. Think on the positive. Never dwell on the negative. I want you to understand something. Negatives make you sick. <coughs> Negatives make you sick. Negatives steal your joy. Negatives destroy your strength. Negatives make you a great prey for the devil. Whatever is good, whatever is positive, pure, worthy of praise, think on these things. When someone comes to me speaking negative about someone, I say, wait a minute. Uh -uh. I know that person. And then I speak positives. It's time the church began to speak positives. Constantly speaking positives. The devil gives us enough negatives. The only way we're going to be victorious in this life and have a genuine peace is to be positive. Hello? And then Paul goes on in Timothy. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Correctly handles the word of truth. How do you correctly handle the word of truth? You don't read into it what's not there. You say what it says. Not what you think it says. And if you don't know what it says, then keep your mouth shut. And look. Don't give somebody what you think it says. If God hasn't revealed to you an answer, then just say, I'm not sure, but I'll check with God. Don't try to be a know-it-all because, let me tell you, right off the hat, right off the bat, there ain't nobody that knows it all. Hello? Okay. You can come for me with answers, but I can only tell you one thing for sure. The only one I ever knew that had the answer was God. I'll give you the best of my understanding as my mind is being renewed. But I can never tell you the ultimate truth. You know, we have so many denominations that claim truth. And it's all on extraneous things. Unimportant things like baptism. Baptism is important, I'm not saying that. It's just that when we spend so much time emphasizing that we must be baptized this way, with this amount of water, in this place, at this time, we're blowing it out. You know, it's not to care less. I guarantee when you go to the throne of God, when we face the, the actual throne, the entrance into the gate of heaven, He's not going to ask you how you were baptized. Hello. He's not. He's going to ask you what you do with my son Jesus. What do you do with Jesus? Renewing our minds. Being refreshed with positive things. Handling the Word of God as the Word of God. Not as what we think it says. That doesn't mean, and we'll talk about it in a moment, that doesn't mean that we don't try to learn from it. We do. But we have to be open because sometimes, at least it's true in my life, I've, I've read passages, I've preached on passages, and then I've gone back to preach on passages and I said, oh, I didn't see that. Ooh, where was that hiding? It was just that I wasn't ready to see it. Have you ever had times in which you read a passage of Scripture and said, I don't know what that means. 
And then you went back and read it sometime later and said, wow, now I have a better understanding. You know, and it's not Ford's light that goes on. It's the Spirit helping us understand that it's time for us to understand. Psalm chapter 1, do you, but His the law is in the law of the Lord. His delight is the law of the Lord and on His law He meditates day and night. A righteous man meditates on the law of the Lord, the Word of God day and night. Picks up the Bible in the morning reads something. You don't have to read chapter, 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 chapter. Just read something. And then meditate on it. Trust God to bring that to memory during the day. Think about it. Meditate on it. And then at night when you go down and lay down, meditate on this more. It'll probably put you to sleep. It'll probably give you rest. It'll probably be peace for your soul. Meditate on this word. He meditates day and night. Psalm 119. I will bless you with an upright heart as I learn your righteous laws. I will obey your decrees. Do not utterly forsake me. How could a young man keep his way pure? By living according to the word. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees and I will not neglect your word. I rejoice. I meditate. I delight. That's a righteous person. That's a person who really wants the renewed mind. Who really wants the positives to come through. Who really wants to know that God really is in control. And that Jesus really is Lord. It's the Word of God that transforms us. It's the Word of God that makes it clear. Gives us that renewed mind that we need so that we can love God with all of our mind. As well as our heart and our soul. The renewing of the mind. Psalm 119, he continues, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey in my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts, therefore I hate every wrong, deep path. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light for my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it. I will follow your righteous laws. I will do it your way, Lord. I will find it. I will meditate on it. I will grow in it. I will have, I will have greater understanding because I'm hungry for your word. And I want to love you with all my mind. There isn't any greater way to love God than to, than to speak to Him about the promises He's given. Lord, you said Lord, you said. Lord, I'm taking you for what you said. I believe in your word. Lord, you said by your stripes I'm healed. I receive that. As I shared a little bit ago, you know, I don't know, I, I can't just trust doctors. Because listen, folks, they're simply practicing medicine. Hello? I don't care who you are or what you're in for, you're still a guinea pig. Hello? Grasp that thought for a moment because it's true. You're just another case that they're trying to find an answer for the next case. Now that doesn't mean that it's bad. And I'll never say that it's bad. I, 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 I've got two phenomenal doctors I love. I think they're phenomenal men. Both of them are Christian men. <laughs> but they will acknowledge, as I told them that I faced them down this past week. You know, I said, you can just practice it. You really don't have the answer. And they said, you're right. We're just trying to find it. But the reality is, He never fails. Does that mean that we're going to always be healed? I wish it were true. But it's not. Sometimes God's working on something else inside of us so that that can take. Sometimes we're asking for the wrong thing. And I'm telling you, as I've told you before, you can never, never, never go wrong when you say, 
Jesus is Lord. Amen. And I'm trusting Him to show me how that Lordship can renew my mind, can renew my spirit, can renew my heart, and next week, my strength. Pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we give you thanks for your word. It is your word that you promised to bless, nothing else. You said, I will bless my word to the people. And Father, we stand on that today. Because your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your word makes the difference in whether we have a renewed mind or just an average mind. Father, give us such a heart after the desire to just know your word that we would meditate on it day and night. That we would not just read your word, but give it heart. Think about it. Think about it. And think about it. Father, it is your word that is life to us. It is your word that transforms our thinking so that we can be more than we are because you are greater than anything in this world. So, Father, by your Spirit, just open up our minds that we might receive more and more and more. And we'll give you the praise. And we'll give you the glory. All because of Jesus. The Word made flesh. In His name, God's people say. Amen. Let us conclude with hymn number four.
And so I receive a blessing from our God. May the greatness of Almighty God, <coughs> Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, fill us with His fullness. Overcome our negative thinking with positive. Fill us with the joy of our salvation. And send us forth into the darkness to be light. Sharing the good news. The Word has come and it has become flesh. And it is in our hearts and lives. Let's go forth with His glory, His power, and His renewed mind. In Jesus' name, God's people say. Amen. Love one another. Thank mm -hmm. you.